We just arrived here at the Banda Aceh Airport. Um, it's our last day on our trip. And I'm kind of surprised I'm actually here right now because uh, February, March of this year, I still really hadn't made up my mind yet that I really wanted to come out here and uh, work because work, uh, I didn't really have the uh, plan. I didn't have it set up. And so, and I didn't know if there was a project really that I felt like I could be used on. And then David Rizika kept pestering me about it. So after two or three times, I said, well, I'm thinking about it now. And so anyway, I ended up coming here and uh, we had worked with some youth for the first two, two, three days. And I really saw God's hand in what we were doing there and, he was, and how he was using me. And I, I really learned that God can take me or anybody like me and just use us, you know, even uh, sometimes when we don't think he can. And uh, we, we really got some good close relationships with the kids down there kids we've never met before, kids that are totally different society than what we live in. But we really instantly bonded with them as soon as they got there. And we really were able to, to uh, I feel like, glorify God through what we did there. So then we went up to Lam Toba, which is up in the mountains of, of Banda Aceh, and we worked with a village up there making a um, cover for a elementary school, basically and later found out it would be it'd be a multi-use building it would be used for other things as well and we were able to interact with the uh, village leaders and really kind of soften their hearts towards the people i really feel like our work there was more than just a building effort but it was a relationship effort as well to, to open up a door by physically building something and trying to glorify god through that so uh, and here I am now, sitting at Banda Aceh Airport, thinking, thank you, Lord, for uh, giving me another opportunity to serve you. Well, this, for most of you out there, you might know this is my uh, second trip to Indonesia, which has been a very, very good trip. Let me tell you, it's uh, worth it. If you haven't been here yet, you need to get up and go. Um, we came out here to initially to meet up with some boys off the street. Let me tell you, I was really nervous about that. I didn't know how that experience would come across, these kids, you know, coming straight off the streets. I didn't know how they would accept us, uh, be angry with us or what. But when we were at the, uh, the island, waiting on the uh, kids in Sabang, we were setting up the tents and then uh, later on that day I heard somebody say, the boys are here. And I looked up and they were all coming around the corner of the uh, building. And every one of them had smiles on their faces and everything. They were come running down to us. And I thought, man, this is going to be great at that point. And they all came down and greeted us. And then uh, I found out that even though they didn't speak English and we didn't speak their language, man, we communicated great. The kids just, uh, they, they knew how to communicate in other ways. They had a blast. It was uh, great working with them. We had two or three days there. We were training them to do first aid, safety, and stuff like that, and they loved it. They were had a, had a blast at it, and uh, a lot of them would just, they just follow us around. They, it was just a bonding experience, and what I saw was, you know, they're no different than us. You know, they might speak a different language, different culture, but once you start getting around them and bonding with them, it was just, you can tell they're no different than us. They just need our love, God's love. they just reaching out for that, uh, for that touch and we were you know we luckily we were there to uh, help out with that God was using us as a tool and uh, I'll never forget that experience working with them and uh, one of the saddest moments of the trip was when uh, we found out that we weren't going to be able to see the boys again before we left today and we, we were all looking forward to that and uh, that didn't happen but it's all for the good we'll we'll be in touch with them again but uh, like I said, if you ever get a chance to do it, you want to experience something great that God can do, you need to come come over to Indonesia and help out. Well, hey, we're in Singapore. We're on our way back from Indonesia. We have had a great trip. We've had a fantastic time. Great team with Ryan and uh, Bill and Ricky. They all did a great job. Really neat having Glenn Larrick there with us and Karen. Um, if I, as I think back over the trip, 
the places that I really saw God were, there were two that stood out for me. One was a boy named Ozni. Uh, actually, he and he died. Two, to the two youngest boys, they were about 11 years old. And uh, it was such a neat thing to be Christ to those boys, to be working with them, playing with them. Ozni, he, I kept asking him his name, and he was a pistol. He was just alive, running around all the time, always flexing his muscles. I kept asking him his name, and he said, Ozni, O Ha S N E, <laughs> saying it for me. It kind of sounded all the all the uh, all the vowels out, and uh, we played at the beach and um, launched them off my shoulders while we were in the water, things like that. And you know, as I was there, I thought, I want to know Osni and Hidayat. I want to know them in heaven one day. I want them to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And the guy that is working with them, they're the street boys. We did the Boy Scout camp for. Uh, that's his goal: is for those boys who are uh, off the streets. I think the two that I just mentioned. Uh, their family just didn't want them and his goal is that they will receive Christ as their Lord and Savior and I want to know those boys on down the road uh, other thing that stood out for me was uh, seeing God work through Glenn and Karen Larry what a great thing that the fellowship uh, has two of our people out there in Aceh uh, serving uh, preparing the way for us uh, the work that we did we were able to do because of all the work that uh, Glenn specifically did in advance of our trip. And I think uh, you as the fellowship should take great pride in the fact that uh, we are a sending church. We have actually sent someone, we've kind of crossed that big threshold and sent someone out on the field. And so it's a great thing. It's been a great trip. Uh, God really used us in some special ways in the village and also uh, with the boys doing the Boy Scout camp in planting seeds where uh, Christ is being shared in a place where uh, for decades uh, it's, it's, it's not been, we've not been able to do that. So it's been a great trip. God bless you. Um, for me, there were really no low points. Um, yeah, we got sick. Uh, and yes, it was really hot at times, but um, it was just an amazing time. I, when I first decided to start doing missions, I was uh, not prepared. My heart wasn't prepared for it. And before I went on this trip, I was uh, thinking about what exactly I could do to touch these boys' lives. We saw that they had uh, great personalities and uh, they were fun kids. And I was worried about connecting with them, you know, language barrier, totally different religion. But I kept remembering what uh, I had prayed was that God would give me just one the very first day that we put the tents up and we made the fire i was looking around at these kids and i saw who i was supposed to connect with um, he was kind of standoffish a little bit older and i could just tell that that was the kid that i was going to be able to meet and get to know and i didn't know if i was going to be able to bring him to christ but it's about relationships and building bridges uh, to get to that point uh, so uh, his name was Anadoc, and I found it sad uh, that he had ambitions and dreams that he's not able to fulfill because of uh, his faith and his government, uh, that a lot of the things he wants to do are forbidden. And I pray that one of those kids out of the 18 comes to Christ because, like I said, it only takes one.